We've seen an unfolding of the transcritical bifurcation, but unfolding pitchforks gives a really great example for understanding co-dimension, multiple parameters, and the phenomena that come with them. So let's consider what happens when we perturb the pitchfork bifurcation. I'm going to start with dxtt equals mu x plus or minus x cubed. So subcritical, supercritical, one of those. And then I'm going to add a bunch of higher order terms just like we did before. I'm going to go up to cubic. These are all going to be with very small coefficients. Now, if we were to do the algebra of this unfolding, we would have to take that long cubic polynomial and start factoring things and try and get it into a really nice form. This is going to require some more serious algebra than we have space for on this page. So trust me that with the appropriate change of coordinates from x to c, and from our parameters mu and all of these a's to now two parameters, alpha and beta. We can convert this system into d c d t equals alpha plus beta c plus or minus c cubed. Now this is a beautiful cubic polynomial. So much inside of this, but what does it mean? Well, what it means, first of all, is that pitchforks are of codimension two. You need these two parameters, alpha and beta, to fully unfold what is happening. If you add higher order terms to the perturbation, you can do a coordinate change, get rid of them, get back to this normal form. But thought of as a full two-parameter family of systems, this cusp bifurcation is worth investigation. Now, why do we call it a cusp bifurcation? Well, that's because if you draw a picture of this in the full three-dimensional space, plotting alpha and beta as a parameter plane and then c in the vertical direction, then this cubic polynomial gives you a surface, a sheet with a cusp singularity at the center where alpha and beta vanish. If you take this and look at slices where you fix one of the parameters, either you fix beta to be a fixed quantity and then look at how alpha varies, or you fix alpha to be a fixed quantity and then look at how beta varies, then the way that it slices this cusp sheet tells you what kinds of bifurcations you have. Fixing beta gives you either a single branch of equilibria or, on the other side, a branch that snakes around in a weird manner. Fixing alpha gives you, again, either a single branch of equilibria or, if you get it just right, a single branch along with a saddle node. There's a particular effect that manifests itself near a supercritical cusp bifurcation. This is in the case we were just looking at, where you fix a value of beta and then let alpha vary past the cusp where you have this sneaking back and forth curve. And what that looks like is a pair of branches of stable equilibria connected by a middle portion of unstable equilibria. Now, at a typical parameter value, you go right to a stable equilibrium and there you stay. But as you turn the dial a little bit, your position changes a little bit until you hit the curve, until you hit that saddle node bifurcation, and then your local equilibrium disappears and you are ejected. You move over to the other stable equilibrium. And that happens typically rather quickly. If again, you try to get back to your previous position by turning the dial down, you find, perhaps to your dismay, that you cannot do so. You are stuck on this new branch until you change the parameter so much that you go back to the way things were. This behavior that we have seen in pitchfork bifurcations is fully unfolded here in the cusp. What this cusp tells us is that the pitchfork is of co-dimension two, and this is great, but the full unfolding reveals a number of interesting phenomena. This is why, like all bifurcations, it is worthy of close investigation.